So this is the second year that the UFC is doing a Noche UFC in Las Vegas on Mexican Independence Day weekend. Are you looking to make this a tradition? Yeah, this will be a tentpole event for us moving forward. Um, this will be one of our yearly big events, whether it's here in Mexico, Texas, Arizona, wherever we decide to do it. But, you know, after this whole sphere thing happened, it gave me the concept that every year I want to do something different and something special and something that we didn't do the year before. But you don't want to come back to the sphere. You already know that? No, the sphere is definitely a one of one event. Um, I wanted to be first. Nobody's ever done a live sporting event out of the sphere. And what was more attractive about that was everybody said it couldn't be done. And those are the kind of things that I love. I love when people say something can't be done. What was the reasoning that they had for it not being possible? Um, first of all, the setup. You, you, you know, it's theater style. You have the big screen there. Um, where would the octagon go? You know, we have that big lighting rig that hangs above 30 years. The lighting rig hangs above. In the lighting rig are the lights that light up the octagon. We have cameras in there, audio, microphones. All that stuff lives inside. That's gone. We had to figure out how do you, how do you shoot this? How do you get the light? If you, did you see you too? Yes. So you two had a few lights that came up like this, and they would go up Videos and down. Videos of it, though, not in oh, person. Oh, not the actual show, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they would go up and down. Our lighting is so much more complex than what they do. Everything that we do is much more complex than a, than a, um, than a concert. But what I loved was when I went to see you two, and I was sitting in there, I realized that you two wasn't the star of the show. The sphere was. So I said, this is fascinating. How could I pull off a sporting event in here, right, where the sphere is the star of the show, but I also need the fighters to, to you know, people need to focus on the fighters. Because what you find yourself doing, like, I, I'm, as soon as this is over, I got a box for the Eagles. I'm going to see the Eagles at, at, at the sphere, right? Very cool. And what you do is you're in these seats, and you're watching the screen, and you're listening to these songs that you love. And every once in a while, you'll peek over and look at the band. You know, and whatever, and then you kick back and you start. And I was, I was blown away by the whole thing. I'm like, how the hell could you pull off a sporting event in here? And make, so these are all the little details and things. There's so many little pieces to this puzzle for this to come off seamlessly on, on September 14th. Uh, I'm looking forward to how, how it all plays out. You've described this as a love letter to Mexico, a tribute to the Mexican people for their extraordinary contributions to combat sports. When yep. you think of those contributions, what do you think of? Who do you think of? Yeah, so all the great fighters. Some of the baddest dudes that ever walked the face of the earth have come from Mexico. So when you look at their, their heritage, their culture, there's lots of things that I love about the Mexican people. How proud they are to be Mexican. How proud they are uh, of where they come from. How hard they work. They're known as hard workers. They're known as a certain type of fighter. Move forward, never quit. Um, you, know, uh, you know, take two punches uh, to give one. You know, th th all these things. Plus, very, very family oriented. They, they work hard every week. They'll get their paycheck on Friday and they will spend that money supporting other Mexicans. Whether it's the beer they drink, whether it's a, a singer, an, an athlete, or a fight, or whatever it is. And, um, you know, a lot of their culture is based around food. Just everything about the Mexican culture, I really do love. And, and as a kid growing up, you know, white kid from here, I was a big Julio Cesar Chavez fan. So, um, yeah. This, Will he this, be honored as part of this? You'll see. You'll see. What We're going to honor everybody. Everybody who ever came from Mexico that fought for anything will be honored in this show. Um, so Canelo has to be a part of it. Mexican, Mexican Independence Day, who? Canelo. Canelo is definitely a part of it. Okay. A hundred percent. Well, and he plays a unique role in that weekend because yep. you are going up against a Canelo fight in Las Vegas. What kind of statement, if any, is the UFC trying to make by competing with a Canelo event on Mexican Independence Day weekend? in Las Vegas. Yeah, I knew that, that there was gonna be an event. You have to assume it's gonna be Canelo that night. Um, you know, it, it, it is what it is. Uh, they're gonna do their thing. We're gonna do our thing. You know, I, I, Al Heyman slid in there and stole that date from us, which I gotta give him props. Our, our Vegas PBS viewers may not know who Al Heyman is, and I wonder what your description of him would be. Yeah, Al Heyman is a boxing promoter um, who is a very, very bright guy, very sharp. 
and what makes him fascinating as a boxing promoter, right? So when you think of all the promoters and the, uh, you know throughout life, whether it's P.T. Barnum or or it's or it's, or it's Vince McMahon or uh, you know Aram and King and all these guys, you, you know who they are. You've seen them a million times. Al Heyman is in the shadows. He's a guy that you've never seen, you know. Yet he is a you know one of the biggest fight promoters in, in the boxing business right now, and he's very intelligent and. Props to him. He slid in and stole my date at MGM. And, uh, but if that didn't happen, I believe that everything happens for a reason. If that doesn't happen and things don't line up the way they did, I'm not at the sphere. I'm not first. And a lot of other things. So this was meant to be. This was meant to happen. And the fact that we're going head-to-head -head with him that night, um, you know, they're, they're going to do the MGM is guaranteeing the gate to them. That the, so they're guaranteeing them the money, no matter whether they sell tickets or don't. We actually sold the tickets that we're selling tonight, uh, or on Saturday night, I mean. But, uh, yeah, I love it. It's all, it's all healthy, good stuff. Healthy, good stuff with Heyman and Canelo. Okay. Not healthy, good stuff with MGM. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, have you worked that out with them? Are you well, feeling better about that Bill relationship? Bill Hornbuckle, who, who runs MGM, is, I, I couldn't have done the sphere without Bill Hornbuckle. I'm under contract with MGM. I was upset about a lot of things, and this was his, uh, his, his, his olive branch to, to create some peace between us. So he gave me this fear. I appreciate it, and uh, yeah, we'll move forward after this event. When I heard about all this, I was thinking, okay, well, the UFC opened a performance institute in Mexico City earlier this year, and perhaps this is part of a big plan to develop an MMA star in Mexico that could compete with the popularity of Canelo and then take over this weekend in Las Vegas, especially since we don't know how much longer Canelo will be fighting. How far of a stretch is that line of thinking? Yeah, no, I, I think that, uh, well, I, th I also think that if Canelo retires, there's always a Mexican star that emerges and pops up. I, I, don't, I don't ever to remember. To his level? Yeah, I don't really remember a time when there wasn't a Mexican star that, that had popped up that, you know, it's the crazy thing about this business. First of all, people have been, um, you know, talking about the death of boxing for 30 years. And, and, and we're still sitting here in almost 2025 still talking about big fights in boxing. Um, and boxing is so ingrained in the Mexican culture that I was in Mexico City a couple months ago driving to the arena and we drove by a playground right swing sets monkey bars the whole there was a boxing ring in the middle of the playground you know what I mean and I was I blown away by that I literally had the guy stop and I filmed it that's how ingrained there. That there's literally boxing gloves running through their veins in Mexico. So I've been working for a long time to uh, create talent and, uh, you know, uh, get our brand and, and, and MMA down there. The PI is going to be a game changer for us. You know, we're taking all these kids in off the streets in Mexico City and training and everything's free. You come in and everything is free. Food, supplements, uh, training, um, equipment, the uh, uh, physical therapy, you name it, it's all free. And what will happen is, obviously, we'll get some, some kids that will become professional fighters, world champions, whatever. Not everybody will. Other people will become trainers. Or, but some way, somehow, they will touch the business in, in, in the future. And that Performance Institute is one of three in the entire world. So right. one here in Vegas, the other in China, and then Mexico. Why, why Mexico? And coming soon, the Middle East. Uh, we're building one in the Middle East, too. Um, Mexico was important to me. Mexico, there's other places that I want to build Performance Institutes, but um, Mexico was first for me. It was very important to me. How much have you spent on this event, this Noche UFC at the Sphere? $20 million. We're $20 million in. How much do you typically spend on a UFC pay-per-view event? Two to two and a half million. Wow. Yeah. The budget was eight. <laughs> <laughs> it's like building a house. You know what I mean? You, you start off here and you end up here. So. Yet, your stakeholders are okay with this? Nobody, nobody gets in my way. And when, when I want to do something, I do it. The, the, um, the board came out here. They flew out here. It was the first time I ever met the board was when I announced this and started spending some money. So the board flew out here and they wanted to see uh, 
you know, what, what the sphere was, what it was all about, and they, they were pumped when they left here. They loved it. But you don't want to hold another event there. Biggest gate in UFC history, biggest pre-buys ever for, for an event. People buying it already now, not even the week of the event. Um, this, yeah, this is going to be a massive event for us. So Those tickets are mighty expensive. That's why it's the biggest gate in UFC history. <laughs> But I, I just want to make it clear, you don't want to return there because of how expensive it is. Well, I, it's not that I don't want to return there. I, I have a deal with MGM, you know what I mean? So I already, I'm under contract. Uh, for Bill, how long? Huh? For how long? Well, we just signed an extension. Okay. That was all part of this whole thing, too. How many years? I wasn't going to sign the extension, uh, you know. It, it, was, it was ugly with okay. MGM. And it's not, not that it's pretty now, but Bill Hornbuckle, in, in my opinion, did the right thing and, and uh, you know, is trying to, uh, trying to make this right, so. Was it necessary for you to have a title sponsor for this event because um, of how expensive listen, it was? Anytime, anytime you can get more sponsors, especially when you're, you know, spending this type of money, it, it doesn't suck, <laughs> it doesn't suck. But this is the first time that it's officially, it's Riyadh season, Noche UFC. Yeah, yeah, it's the first time I think we've ever done that, but we've had, title sponsors like the, the, the you know Bud Light is one of the big sponsors for this event too and presented by Bud Light or brought to you by Bud Light yeah. Riyadh season though is a festival in Riyadh the capital of Saudi Arabia and so this is Saudi Arabian money that's helping fund this Mexican heritage themed event. Yeah. Th does that seem strange to you? Yeah, no it's, it's it's fascinating actually because when you look at um, what Sheikh Turkey is doing right now he is a he is a fight fan. He loves fighting. He loves the sport. And this guy has made a massive impact in a very short amount of time. And it's funny because I don't normally get along with a lot of the other guys in the industry. And so I didn't know how this relationship would go when we first met. And so, so everyone knows, he is the General Entertainment Authority Chairman of Saudi Arabia. Right. We met and uh, we sat down, we talked about boxing and UFC and slap and lots of other things. And uh, yeah, I ended up creating a really good relationship with this guy and I like him. And you know me, if I didn't like him, I'd let you know I didn't like him, but I like him a lot. And I think what he's doing is fascinating. And it's interesting that that's what it took to get the big fights done in boxing. It took, it took Saudi Arabia type money to, to make those fights. He has described your event as competing with Canelo. He has said, we will eat him. <laughs> Yet, the fight he really wants is a boxing match between Canelo and Terrence Crawford. Does, right. Does that matter to you? Yeah, no. That, that, that's, listen, that they, on that side, they have their own, um, you know, I guess we'll call them initiatives or whatever it is that, that, that they're trying to do. But, um, you know, for me, it, it, it's all about Noche UFC. How that plays out for him in the future. I mean, I, I can't see how they couldn't get a fight done with Canal. I mean, they're making fights right now that you thought would never get done. Wouldn't have happened, yeah. So anything yeah. is possible. I think they could end up getting a deal done with Canelo and Heyman. And then the last thing, uh, there are talks that you may want to start a boxing league with him. How much truth is there to that? <laughs> <laughs> Um, listen, I, I've been talking about getting involved in boxing for a long time. You are every, involved in boxing. Sort of, yes. And then every time I get off a phone with a boxing guy, I go, why in the world would I want to do this? They're just, the, the, you know, most of them are not good people. So, um, there's so many stories that I could tell you about, you know, as I sort of kicked the tires on this thing and looked around. But what is interesting about, you know, what these guys are doing in Saudi Arabia is they see they're, they're, they're investing in the sport, okay? Nothing works without an investment. You have to invest. Like, if you look at what we've done over the last 20-whatever years, we've always reinvested in the sport, whether it's this place, building the, the PI here, building a PI down there, building a PI in China, and the list goes on and on, you know, and... and 10 years, there'll probably be four or five more PIs around the world. And, and when you invest like this, 
the sport continues to grow and, and, and everything grows. Boxing has done the exact opposite. Every fight is a going out of business sale. Let's grab as much money from the people as we can and run away with it. Um, Saudi Arabia is looking and Sheikh Turkey is looking to invest in boxing. So, Do you want to be part of a league with him? Anything is possible. <laughs> Dana White, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.